So the accounting issue here relates to how we account for a derivative, which costs us nothing, but at the year end has a value of 100. And we're told that that derivative is used as a hedging instrument in respect of a highly probable future foreign currency transaction. If this was a question that was set in the SBR exam, it may well be worth something like four marks and we'd have to build an answer. And one way of building an answer is to start with some simple definitions and explanations. And one of the things that we can say quite easily is that we know that all derivatives must be measured at fair value. And that the default for derivatives is that they are fair value through P&L. And that's, I think, the first thing to kind of get to grips with. But this is a derivative which is a hedging instrument. And therefore, whenever we're hedging, what we're looking to do is to use the derivative as an offset, to use the derivative as an insurance policy, to use the derivative to match so whatever gain or loss we have on the derivative, that is being paired with an offset against a loss or gain on the hedged item. Now in hedging, there's two particular types of hedge. There's a fair value hedge, where there is an instant offset that takes place in the P&L. And there is a cash flow hedge, where the transaction hasn't yet occurred, the gain or loss hasn't yet occurred, and that's what we're looking at here. We're looking at a highly probable future transaction. So we're, as a, as a, as a company, we're risk adverse, and we're using the derivative to cover ourselves against the risk that the cost of buying the foreign currency in the future will go up. And presumably, because we're told that the derivative, the hedging instrument, has a gain of 100, that means that the cost of buying the foreign currency would have gone up by 100 as well. Now, that's assuming it's an efficient hedge. Yeah, I mean, if it's an inefficient hedge, well, let's come back to that later. So this is a cash flow hedge. The, the derivative is being used to protect ourselves from a highly probable future cash flow, which could change against us, has changed against us. So I'm glad we've taken out the hedging instrument. In these circumstances, we cannot match it against anything in the P&L because the transaction hasn't been recorded. The loss is not a double entry within the system. So the derivative is recognized as an asset, debit the asset by 100, and the gain goes to OCI. The gain goes to equity. The gain goes to reserves. And what's key about the credit to the reserves being reported in other comprehensive income is that it will be recycled. It will be reclassified back through the P&L in order to then to affect a matching process. Now, if we were told that the cash flow hedge was inefficient, not effective, then that non-effective element would be recognized in the profit and loss account. But I think the inference was, and we were, we were assuming that this is an efficient hedge. So because it's a cash flow hedge, we are recognizing the gain on the derivative directly to equity. So it can be recycled back to perform an effective matching and offset at a later date uh, when the risk on the hedged item arises. So there you are. It's not straightforward. Thank you for listening. I have a podcast which goes into accounting for derivatives in more detail, and you can easily find that podcast. It's on Spotify, it's on Google, it's on Apple. All you have to do is search my name, Clendon, C-L-E-N-D-O-N, A-C-C-A podcast, and you will find it. Thank you very much.